Deacon Nick here on Thursday of the 19th week of Ordinary Time. You live in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. I think perhaps Ezekiel lived at our house when my kids were growing up, but then it occurs to me he could just as easily have been living at my parents' house when I was growing up. So God tells Ezekiel, because they do not listen or hear, put a skit on for them, a little play to pique their interest. Warn them in this play of the pending punishments and failure and exile and furtive escapes they will have to undergo in the future if their behavior persists. And just like at our house, guess what? They still did not get it. The psalmist lays out for us the results of Ezekiel's attempts. They tempted and rebelled against God, the Most High, and kept not his decrees until finally he surrendered his strength into captivity, his glory into the hands of the foe. He abandoned his people to the sword and was raised, enraged against his inheritance. Ah, the fine line between mercy and love and justice and forgiveness and punishment and rebellion and growing up. C.S. Lewis wrote, Mercy seasons justice as salt seasons meat and gives it flavor. Mercy follows justice and perfects it. Justice demands that the wrong be addressed to show mercy without addressing the wrong and to pardon the unrepentant is not true mercy, but license. Because God's very attributes are all merciful, all just, all loving, all forgiving, he could not possibly be God and allow unrepentant wrong to go unpunished. I remember repeating to my children what my father said many times to me. I'm punishing you to teach you and because I love you. I show you mercy because I continue to love you even after you force me to punish you over and over again for the same behaviors. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiving then is a sacred duty. If God has shown mercy to us in, in granting us pardon for our sins, then we in turn must show mercy and forgiveness towards every person who has offended us. Peter asks, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Jesus makes it clear that there is no limit to giving and receiving forgiveness. Does mercy then overlook justice? By no means. Justice demands that everyone be given their due for what they do wrong. So when is it right to show mercy and pardon to those who have acted unjustly or wrongly? The prophet Amos speaks of God forgiving transgressions three times, but warns that God may not revoke punishment for the fourth. When Peter posed the question of forgiveness, he characteristically offered an answer he thought Jesus would be pleased with. Two times Amos plus one for good measure. Why not forgive seven times? Peter must have stood speechless when Jesus replied that one must forgive 70 times that. Jesus' answer to the question is simple. Love, justice, mercy, and forgiveness are not mutually exclusive, but work in harmony with one another. To follow Jesus' command, we must endlessly pour out love, even in the face of persecution, even as the behavior continues, even as our way of life is threatened. Even in the face 
of forgiveness for justice as we work to end the injustice, even in every effort to protect the innocent as we punish those who perpetrate injustice. Are we the servant who owes a king's ransom for sins Christ forgave on the cross? Or are we the servant who owes only a pittance for Christ's ransom on the cross? Christ died for the forgiveness of all sins. And so no offense our neighbor can do to us can compare with our own personal debt to God for offending him. We have been forgiven an enormous debt we could not, not possibly pay repay on our own. That is why the Father in heaven sent his only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay the ransom for our sins. Peter says of it, You were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers with the precious blood of Christ. Christ commands us to love our neighbor. C.S. Lewis, then, is correct. Justice, mercy, and forgiveness poured out continuously and judiciously are the spice that gives love its flavor. Have a wonderful and glorious day as we each forgive the wrongs done us. Take care.